Follow along in this tutorial and learn how to create a minimalistic business card design with a QR code that scans contact information. In this lesson, I'll show you how to design a simple business card, generate a QR code, and place it into a layout. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, let's get started. As always, you can find links in the description below where you'll find the lesson notes and files to follow along. I'm going to click on new file. That'll bring up my new document window. Let's click the print tab, then choose view all presets. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see there's a preset here for US business card. Go ahead and click that. That's three and a half inches wide and two inches deep. I'm going to uncheck facing pages. We do want a landscape orientation for this tutorial. If you want a portrait business card, you can choose that and follow along using the same technique. I'm going to choose or select two pages and I'm going to decrease the margins to 0.25. You can always check your preview to see the document set up in real time. Once you're satisfied, go ahead and click create. I have all my assets for this tutorial in my CC libraries. Again, you can find them in the download folder, which I'm sharing in the description below. The first thing I want to do is add a green background to both the front and back of this business card. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit and click the rectangle frame tool. And let's start with the front side of the business card. And I have two colors here. This is for a fictional um, financial company. So I chose this kind of luxurious green for this branding. Okay. And I'm going to pair it with this color here, this tannish color, and then everything else is that, that same tan color. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to click on the logo artwork and just drag that on the page. That's in your folder, which you can also do just from your desktop. And the, the fonts I'll be using for this tutorial actually, um, are a combination of Belay display, Belay regular, and Gibson Light. I found that that pairing goes very nicely for this fictional company here. So I'm gonna zoom in, grab my type tool, just drag out a box. And this is going to be called Baker and Associates. Now this tagline here in this logo that I've created, um, that will be Gibson. So it's an Adobe font, which you can download, um, but you can use something similar. So Montserrat might work or Gotham might work, something similar like that. So Gibson, and this is Gibson Lite. Now something to keep in mind, this will be caps as well, so Shift Command K. And then something to keep in mind when you're doing a business card is you don't wanna make, you wanna make sure that the point size of the, the type is not uh, overwhelming. So traditionally 12 point for a print project like a magazine for body tax might work. But when you're doing a business card, it, it might be too large. So I'm going to scale that down, shift command um, less than. And I usually go to about eight. If eight seems too big, you can always scale it down to six or seven. I wouldn't go any further down than six point. But this is all dependent on the font that you're using. So again, I'm just going to track that out. The uh, shortcut for that is hold your option or alt on windows and use your right arrow key. Let's center that as well, shift command C. And just so I know that this is centered, I'm just gonna drag each end to uh, the, the margins. And again, this will be that tan color there. Double click. I'm just gonna take my guides off for a sec. The text frame is still selected. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the logo and then drag it down so it's centered to the page. Something like that works. I'm just gonna zoom out just to see the overview because that's a good way of seeing if the logo is too big. I think that is good. I'm gonna try that at six point, shift command greater than or less than. Yeah, see that might be, uh, it still works. Let's split the difference and do seven. I think seven works for there. Perfect, and again, you can play around with the positioning if you want that into the lower left side of the front card or the, the front side of the card or uh, the right side. That's all That's all dependent on you and see what, what works best for you. But for this, I'm just gonna keep it in the center position. So let's move on now to the bottom part or the second page of the, the business card. And again, I'm going to 
click on the rectangle frame tool and create another background with that green color. Now this could be a white, the white side. Um, I'm just going to actually reverse that. Perfect. You can make this white if you wanted and then maybe use the green uh, color for the type. But I think in keeping this more of a, a luxurious uh, kind of feel, look and feel for this card, I wanted to stick with that, that green there. So now let's go ahead and start adding some of the other content to this, um, this side, which will contain much of the information. So let's add the person's name in first. I'm just gonna click the type tool and drag out a frame. And the name is Brianna Baker. The font that I'm using is Beli Display. And 12 points still might be too large for this, even though we want the name to be the largest element on this side. So I'm just going to make it 10 point and see how that looks. I think that's better. I'm gonna make it that color there. I'm gonna bring it down here and I'm just going to actually create another copy of that by holding Option and drag. If you're on Windows, that's Alt and drag. And this is Chief Financial officer let's make this eight point and gibson light that will also be cap so shift command or shift control on windows and k now you can see that's still a little too large so i'm going to decrease that to about six point and maybe open up the tracking a little bit option right arrow again maybe 40 that works there I'm gonna bring in the rest of the information as well as some of these icons that I have in my CC libraries. Let's bring in the information first, which I have here. So I'm just going to paste it in, which is very large. Again, let's make this eight point or maybe six. So I do want it that size, that's a good size there. And I wanna make this Beli regular. Now the one thing I wanna do as well is just add some separation uh, in between each line. And I'll show you how to do that. If you bring in information like this, you can do it one line at a time, or you can do it the way I'm about to show you, adding uh, more space after each paragraph break. So I'm gonna select this, and first off, let's change the color so it matches that. And I've already changed the font, and I wanna line it up with that, and just move it down. Let's d decrease the size of the text frame as well. I'm gonna select all of it and go to my properties panel. And under the paragraph section, if I hover over this area here, do you see where it says space after? That's uh, the space after each paragraph. So I'm just going to increase that. That might be too much, so let's make it 0 0.045. We can always adjust that after. I'm going to double click the bottom handle to make that fit. And let's go ahead and bring this up so it's at the center point and maybe move it to the right for now because we have to bring in the icons next. So I'm gonna click off, go back to my CC libraries. Again, these icons, you'll find them in the download folder which I'm sharing with you. And so the first one is the address. So I have this, this icon here, this little map marker. Now I've already scaled them to the size I want, which is fine. We can adjust the distribution once we get them all on the page. The second one is the LinkedIn handle. So I'm going to bring that over, drop it in. Again, let's move it closer to the LinkedIn handle here. Next one is the website. So I'm going to bring in the cursor pointer, drop that in. And you can see, even if I just move these, um, the smart guides, will show you the distri distribution in between each. You see, it's saying it's equal, but we can, we can just to make sure, we can uh, use the distribution tools up top to make sure they do. The last one is the email, so I'm gonna drag that on and drop it in. Let's move this closer to the email. I'm gonna move it up a bit. Something like that is fine. I'm gonna hold my shift key and click on the other three icons, and in your control panel or properties panel, click on the align to selection drop down and we want that aligned to selection which is fine we want to align the horizontal centers so they're all they're all centered and then we want to distribute the vertical centers so there's equal space that we know 
Now, if you just click off and um, press W on your keyboard, you can see um, how they're aligned, how they're close to. So I can move this down, I can zoom in a little bit and make sure that that is, and then we'll just align them again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit off, but just knowing having it close enough is fine. Let's distribute those again. That is good. I'm just gonna move them off to the left a bit. Let's see how that looks. I can actually now click on the name and the title and shift those over so they also align with that. Perfect, I'm gonna click on this background here, go to my layers panel, and I just wanna lock that. So I can drag all of this and move it to the right for now. I also wanna bring in a hairline, so I'm just gonna maybe grab two guides here, place one at the top of the name and place one at the bottom of the information content. Let's grab our line tool, click, drag, but hold shift when you do to make that line straight. And again, I don't want this rule to be too thick, so I'm gonna make it 0.25. And I also wanna make it that lighter color that we have throughout. I'm just gonna move it to the right for now as well. Now we can start uh, setting up or generating our QR code, which we'll place right on the left-hand side here. And actually, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the logo again. So. Here it is here, I'm just gonna place it in the upper right hand corner. I'm just gonna drop it in and place it somewhere like that. Let's see how that looks. Might be too big, so I'm just gonna scale it down just a bit and place it like so. Now let's go ahead and start generating our QR code. I'm gonna go up to Object and then Generate QR Code. I'm gonna move it off to the side here. Now there are different types of QR codes. You can have plain text, a web hyperlink might be the most common, um, taking users from the QR code to a specific URL. Um, you can set one up for a text message, email, but the one we want is business card since this is a business card. So this is great if you're out networking and you wanna quickly pass off your, your business card to people and if they want to save it directly into their, their mobile phone or mobile device, it saves them time from having to put all this information in. Even though they still have the physical card, this is a gateway or a, a one-stop shop for them to quickly get that information into their phone to contact you um, easier, okay? So business card is what we want, and I'm gonna populate these fields. We don't have to populate all of them, but the essential ones are obviously the name, so Brianna, Baker, actually that's the first name, Baker. You could put Chief Financial Officer for the title. A cell phone, let's just say 516-543-2345. Um, you could put a landline number if you want. Cell phone number might be just, just good enough. Um, email, I'll just use the same one I have here in the business card which is b.baker at bakerconsulting.com. The URL, bakerconsulting.com. Actually, you wanna make sure that you put, put in the www. Okay, organization, this could just be uh, Baker and Associates. The address, 78 Skyline Drive. And that's in Seattle, Washington. Postal code, you don't have to worry about that. And then country, United States. Okay, once you've done that, you can actually choose the color that you want. So typically, if you're putting this on a white background, you'll choose black or a darker color. But because I already have one here, my swatches that we've set up, that's the lighter color. I want it to be that same color, so I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna click OK, and you can see there it is. It's loaded in my cursor, which I can go ahead and just drop that in or drag the size that you want. I'm gonna place it right here. Let's press W on my keyboard, and maybe I'll use these guys, guides here that I set up as a good starting point. I'm gonna click the top part and just drag to the bottom. And it's okay if it's that size because obviously you want it to be noticeable on the business card. Um, I'm gonna turn my guides off for a sec that that line is still too 
too thick. So I'm just gonna make it 0 0.10. How's that look? Yeah, that's much better. And I'm going to, again, distribute it so it's the same space between the information content as well as the QR code. Now what I'll do as well is make sure that this is centered to the page. So I'm gonna hold my shift key and drag it down. It wasn't too far off. And let's shift it to the left so it's also centered vertically to the page. Right there, perfect. I'm gonna click off, turn my guides off. Let's zoom out a bit. That might be too big still, so I'm just gonna scale it down a bit and then center it to the content, something like that. And then again, let's make sure that that line is equal. That's good there. Perfect, next, let's go ahead and scan this and see how it comes up in your mobile phone so then you can directly save it right into your device. So you wanna open your camera on your mobile device. I'm gonna shift over to the left and scan the QR code. You'll see that there's a little prompt that appears once it, once it shows. I'm gonna click that, Brianna, and there's the information that we inputted into the QR code, which I can go down and just easily create a new contact. Now, one thing I also wanna note is if you ever want to go ahead and edit this, if I click this QR code on my page and right click, you can go down to um, edit QR code and it brings up the same information saved initially. So if the phone number changes, you can change it here and then press okay and the QR code will automatically update um, as well. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a simple business card with QR code using Adobe InDesign. If you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all my latest tutorial content. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design using Adobe InDesign, go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.